Greetings, brothers and sisters. Today I want to discuss the topic of evocation and exactly what evocation really is. Um, this is something that has been discussed and debated a lot um, in the occult community as well as, you know, all spiritual communities that have touched upon the subject. Now, I would first like to discuss the two types of opinions and views on this. So let's do that. Now, the first class of people will often say that evocation is merely the externalized projection of one's own psyche. Now, is this true? As far as I'm concerned, no. I believe this isn't just some psychological projection. On the other hand, is there a psychological aspect? Of course there is. Of course there is, okay? The second opinion is that all of this is real and it all takes place here and now, um, physically. Is that true? Yes and no. <laughs> the, the reason why is because there are so many individuals that come to black magic and come to these arts with the idea of evocation being their main point. You know, they want to see a demon. They want to see a spirit. They want to almost like prove it to themselves that all this exists. Now, there is such a thing as spiritual, as physical occurrences during evocation. Let me explain to you exactly what happens during evocation, okay? First off, why do you think a spirit appears with, use, with arms and legs? And why do they speak your naked native language? Why? Now, let's say, for example, you contacted a African spirit. A, vo a loa, or as I say, you contacted an orisha, whatever it may be, or it, even a demon. Most of the demons have African origins, or Middle Eastern origins. So why is it speaking your language? And why is it appearing with arms and legs and a head? We only appear that way because of our environment, how we have evolved and how we have changed over the years. This is why we stand on two feet. This is why we have two legs. This is why we have two arms. But then we see these beings that are so transcendent and so beyond that biological state. And they're speaking our language. Okay. The answer, I do really explain, what is a spirit? That's what I need to answer first. From my own understanding, from working with spirits for over a decade now. Spirits, regardless of what type, spirits are a coalescence, a condensification and a solidification of consciousness and power. Does this mean that, that they aren't sentient? They are sentient. They have their own traits, their own attributes, their own personalities. They are alive, guys. These are sentient beings, okay? Unless, of course, you're evoking... Um, you know, a Servitor or a Fourth Tormo or an Egregor. But these are real entities, okay? Otherwise, stuff like, you know, poltergeist activity, possession, and some other incredible things that I've witnessed, uh, it just leads me to, to come to the conclusion that these are real beings, okay? Now, now that we know what a spirit is, we use various methods of contacting a spirit through evocation, okay? This preparatory immersion, immersing yourself into the entity and into the being. There, it, there is the action then of aligning yourself with the spirit and attuning your vibrations and creating subtle alterations in yourself towards the spirit. You can't just jump into an evocation of, you know, a spirit that has such a vast history and such a, you know, complex nature or, or powerful being. Sometimes you can, um, but preparatory immersion is a great thing, as well as the alterations. Now, how would we make these alterations in the self? We would do um, acts of devotion, 
you know, like giving offerings isn't just a act of respect. It's also a exchange. It's not like, okay, you're going to, I'm going to evoke you soon and you're going to do this for me. So I'm going to give you this offering now. It doesn't work like that, guys. Spirits aren't really interested in the bullshit that we give them necessarily. You know, um, what can you give a spirit that can manifest anything? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, so you giving an actual item, it, it, it's, it's symbolic of you giving your energy, of giving something in return. And then as you make that transference, the essence of the spirit then comes to you, okay? Now, you can do invocations, prayers, um, meditations, mantras, sigil work, all these other things to really align yourself with the spirit. But anyway, let's say we skip through all that, yeah? You jump into the evocation, you summon the spirit, okay? You enter into trance, you make subtle contact with it through sigil gazing, through... Um, various other methods of energy work uh, through incantations, invocations, whatever you're doing, whatever your method is, okay? Then the spirit is there. Now, here's where novices fail. They will sit there and they'll start screaming and, and begging and pleading and they can't see anything, okay? Because they think this is the movies, you know? We rub a genie lamp and boom. Right there and then there's the spirit. The spirit is there. It descends upon you as an essence. A spirit is an essence that descends into the room. Okay. As it descends into the room, that's its body. That is its body. We are concocting the body that it manifests in. When we are gazing, when we are interacting with it, there is something known as the crossroads state, right? Where you're halfway in this world and the world's beyond. You've got your one foot in the physical world and one foot in the spiritual world. This is a trance state as well as it, it, it is an actual place. It's the world in between the worlds. In this state, the essence of the spirit is flowing into you and a portion of yourself is flowing into the spirit. It's like now the spirit is learning about you. It knows what language you speak and the spirit knows what you want. And you are pulling the essence of that spirit in. During this, during this, this transference, you will start to have communication happen and the spirit will start talking to you internally, guys, internally, massively, right? This is massive. The spirit does appear, it first appears internally and the voice of the spirit appears internally. It's all you internal because these are external forces which in our primitive state, we can't gauge with, we can't interact with in its true totality. You know, like they used to say, if, if the mortal seen the true face of the gods, we tear our eyes out and we go insane. It's sort of like that, it's sort of a metaphor for it, okay? So now that the spirit is there, now that you have contact with it, the presence of the entity is there, the entire environment's changed. The deeper you go into the communication, the more vivid it becomes, and then it projects out. Okay, this is the psychological aspect where you've got to trust in the internal flow of communication. And then through that internal flow of communication, it all gets projected out using different methods, using trance, using uh, mind altering substances, using um, just trance works, you know, pain, um, euphoria, uh, pleasure, whatever it may be. Okay, you get yourself into the state where you merge the inner with the outer, the upper with the lower, alpha and the omega. This is the crossroads state. And this is the state where the spirit will flash before you. Now, sometimes you may just flash. Sometimes you may just see an outline of the spirit. People get frustrated, you know. They say, I can see it in you. I can't see it out there. You're structuring it, okay? I've even told people that you can do full evocations, ask an entity for something. You might not have a visible manifestation, but you'll get what you ask for. And you do get what you ask for. And you do um, receive information from the spirit that you previously didn't have access to. Um, which just proves, again, that this isn't psychological, guys. Some of these spirits can tell you things that you don't even know. So. So, evocation is, in, is pulling down or rising up or whatever a spiritual essence that we call spirits. Demons, gods, angels, elementals, planetary spirits, the dead, you name it. We are calling it um, into an essence 
and we are willing it to be condensed in one area and as it condenses we solidify it and then we use our internal interface to interact with it our um, notions of language our notions of communication um, will be picked up by this uh, spiritual sentience and then will be translated through our psyche using um, our spiritual senses our astral senses it gets filtered into our conscious mind um, into words into symbols and into an appearance of a spirit and it can get so physical that um, sometimes the, the more you do this you can reach your hand out and the spirit touches your hand and indeed the spirit's hand is as hard as a person's hand would be in yours um, you know I've had experiences where there have literally been demonic orgies and during these demonic orgies during the pain the mayhem and the insanity you do get the moment of actually surreal physical pleasure as well as physical pain um, like you would with a, a regular human sexual partner so all of this is very real um, evocation works this way guys don't go thinking that you're gonna join evocation you're gonna say these magic words don't think that you you're gonna you know the spirit's not appearing because you haven't given enough so you think you i've heard some crazy stories you've given more blood you've given more semen you've you some of you have, have bought expensive crazy moroccan incenses you know you some of you have done animal sacrifices some of you some people go insane and say that they're going to start sacrificing human beings none of this is needed none of it is needed understand the mechanics of evocation first this is the mechanics guys it works internally and then it gets projected outwards and there's a reason for that because if anyone is truly ascended and anyone is truly a spiritual adept they will tell you that everything that we see and observe in our reality is first filtered inward right now i am looking at the camera and i think i am looking at the camera in actuality this is an illusion guys you think that you're looking at me through your screens in actuality that is an illusion too just this illusion is being passed down to us by our ancestors and it's a biological hereditary trait the illusion has been passed on to us this illusion that we perceive reality in it has become helpful it's become beneficial therefore we stick with it therefore this illusion becomes automatic this is why when many people will be labeled as insane uh or, or or delirious because they they ex they experience reality in a different way than us and because of that society deems them as insane clinically insane and they need to be institutionalized while in actuality some of these people are actually spiritually gifted people and they're observing a whole other level of reality that we are not ob observing or a whole other version of the illusion you know, everything could be an illusion. I I'm also a fan of that too. Everything is an illusion. Everything comes from the primordial abyss and we just experience it how we have to experience it. So first understand that just because everything looks physical and real doesn't mean it is. It's just because you are so used to this illusion, guys. You were so used to it. So evocation is the act of altering perception, altering observation, while actually having some supernatural and spiritual mechanics into it we are indeed summoning an external force but what is external is also internal this is the crossroads all the time this is what the ancients have been telling us from day one know the self and you will know everything else if you want to figure something around you if you want to figure something out around you look within if you want to stand above you've got to understand below if you want to understand below you've got to understand above it's the alpha the omega the god the god s the male uh, the masculine the feminine you know everything like that you have to understand so this is how evocation works in a sense this is just explaining some of the mechanics for some of those who might be having difficulty with it and um trust in the process guys really trust in the process because otherwise you're going to just be ruining ruining it for yourself a lot of people say this is role play a lot of people say it's bullshit but i can tell you from going from a homeless uh, child who who lived in a homeless refuge going through extreme um, physical and mental abuse to where i'm at now to be able to manifest anything that i personally want and get rid of anything that i personally want and alter everything around me to the degree that pleases me that has to kind of tell you that this isn't a role play and I, don't, I can't really believe that these spirits are really just a psychological projection of ourselves and our power i mean 
in an essence, they are, because if you truly understand that we are the living gods, that means we are everything. That means that the spirit that we are calling is actually us, but it's it's not as well. Just like you are actually me and I am actually you. That is one of the things that you, you'll start to understand as you become an ascended being and as you start to develop in your ascension, that the, the one of the greatest illusions is the illusion of separation. And that nothing is separate and all things are one. It's just externalized and emanated in a certain way where they seem separate. Just like the world around us, guys. We think this world is just solid and we think, you know, this is solid structure. It's not. Everything is in a constant movement. Everything is constantly vibrating. It's just we do not see it. We do not experience it in our mundane state. Anyway, guys, I'm rambling on. Um, this is just explaining some of the inner mechanics of evocation. So this is going to be um, episode one of discussing evocation and teaching evocation and many other things like this. So I hope you enjoyed. I suggest for people who are new to listen to the video again, uh, maybe take some notes, maybe understand what I'm saying a little more. And then it's going to make things a lot easier for you and your development as the operator in evocation. And as just a magician in general, guys. So, um, yeah, till we meet again soon.